Good morning. Welcome everybody to our service from St George's Barbourne Worcester and St John Baptist in Clays on today the Wednesday, the Wednesday before the ninth Sunday after Trinity. I am John Butterworth, a reader or local lay minister at both churches and with me is my wife Jan. Hello. Our theme today is, is it ever too late to say sorry to God? I'm going to start with a song of joy. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. All glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Now the first reading. And the first reading is from 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 to 10. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all our sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. The second reading is from Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. It's when Jesus is on the cross. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you. Today you will be with me in paradise. Thank you, Jan. I'm at the age I read newspapers every day. And I have to admit, the older I get, the one of my favourite sections are the obituary pages. I find it absolutely fascinating reading the stories of the famous people and the not so famous people and what they have done with their lives and what they did that many, many readers didn't realise until after their death. The other week, I read about Tran Tien Kiem, an army general who became prime minister of South Vietnam in the final turbulent years of the Vietnam War, before the country fell to North Vietnam and the Viet Cong guerrillas on April the 30th, 1975. A few days earlier, Kiem had fled to Taiwan and then on to America, where he began a comfortable new life for the rest of his time on Earth. 
I was a teenager and then a young journalist in that era. It was the first war I really remembered and I was both captivated and horrified by the TV pictures and the newspaper articles. A CIA briefing said the army officer and politician Kiem was a lone wolf and controversial figure who'd been involved in num numerous coups. He oversaw the police and a brutal security system. And not surprisingly, he had some important enemies. He was also suspected of corruption and drug smuggling. So on the whole, he hadn't led a very saintly life. But interestingly, Kiem, one of 12 children born in 1925 to landowning parents, had been educated at a Roman Catholic school in Saigon and had attended a Catholic youth club, though he'd not shown any signs of being interested in the Catholic faith then. However, his upright upbringing must have had some impact on him because as I read his obituary further on, I had a big surprise. At the age of 93 and sitting in a wheelchair, Kiem was baptised into the Roman Catholic Church in California in 2018. He said, my faith is weak, but I experience God's mercy. He bears all my sins. He saves me and he does not allow me to perish. That obituary set me thinking. Are we ever too old on earth for God to forgive us, even if we've lived a far from faithful Christian life most of that time? Three years later, after his baptism, TM died on June the 24th this year, age 95, and entered into paradise. TM reminded me of our reading this morning from Luke chapter 23 and the scene on the cross when Jesus was crucified by two, between two criminals. One of them hurled insults at Jesus, saying, If you're the anointed one, save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God? We have done things that deserve this sentence, but this man Jesus hasn't. Then he turned to Jesus and said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. There's a very poignant legend attached to this penitent thief who was called variously Dismas, Demas and Dumachus. The story goes that as the child Jesus fled with his parents into Egypt, they were attacked by robbers. Jesus was saved by the son of the captain of the band of robbers who couldn't bear to hurt this lovely child and told this lovely child not to forget what he had done. That robber youth who had saved Jesus that day as a baby met him again on the cross at Calvary, and this time Jesus saved him. Whether the story is true or not, it is a lovely legend that I couldn't help and resist putting into this morning's reflection. We must never say, I am too old, I have lived a bad life. I can't be a Christian now. Surely this story about the South Vietnamese army general and the penitent thief on the cross tells us that it's never too late on this earth to turn to Christ. So long as our hearts continue to beat, the invitation to Christ stands, as it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we say sorry for our sins, for our wrongdoings to God, he can always be trusted to forgive us, no matter how old we are, and to take our sins away. While there is life, there is hope for every one of us, as General Kiem and the thief on the cross shows us. If you want to discuss this further, do contact our vicar, the Reverend Joe Musson, whose details are on our Facebook page. Amen. So in our time of prayer, let us start with a collect for the week. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, 
nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with us in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that we can know your restoration in our lives so we can follow you. Let us know that whatever we have done, if we come to you with forgiveness and say truly sorry, you do not disqualify us from your almighty love. Like a runner who falls and gets up again, we too want to start again and finish the race you have set before us. We thank you that you love to hear our prayers in honesty and truth for ourselves and others. So we pray for those whose homes have been flooded very recently in London and in China, Bangladesh and Nepal and many other places. And for those world leaders meeting in London this week to prepare for the summit on climate change in the autumn. We pray that changes will be made to protect our planet for today's and future generations. We pray for all those who are under pressure today, for those awaiting medical care and operations, for those short-staffed at work because of the pandemic, and for those frustrated having to isolate, and those suffering from COVID. We pray for all who are sick, for their healing and peace, and remember those who mourn or who are in mental distress. We lift up our medical staff, the planners, politicians and managers as they weigh up the balance of risk, praying for wisdom and guidance in continuing to make a path out of the pandemic. And at this holiday time, we also pray for ourselves and our children and young people for a relaxing time of fun and laughter with friends after this hard time. Light up your life, our lives with your holy presence, Lord. Fill us with deep joy and peace beyond all understanding and let us to continue to serve you, knowing your forgiveness and love. So as our Saviour taught us, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Pray at home with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Jan, and thank you for joining us for our short time of worship today. Do join us on Sunday at our services at St George's Barbourne and St John Baptist Claims. More details on our Facebook page. Final prayer. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.